Okay. Here we go again. Listen, um, I s didn't put something in the last video. I've got to put that in this video. We're a little, little out of whack here. Let's try this. Um, apologize for the yellow piece of paper, but that's what was next in the pile. Um, I forgot to mention uh, when we talked about acceleration in general that there's a specific acceleration that everything has when it's being acted on by gravity. That's what Galileo was saying in Chapter 1 and, and in Chapter 2, that uh, all objects near the Earth's surface accelerate towards the Earth with the same acceleration. That was a surprising result because we kind of expect bigger things, heavier things, to fall faster than little things. But it turns out that their acceleration, the rate at which the speed increases, is the same for everything. And we'll see why when we learn how gravity works. But for now, I can just tell you that the acceleration of an object that's under the influence of gravity at the Earth's surface is 9.8 meters per second squared downward. Uh, downward, it's actually the definition of downward. Downward is the direction that gravity pulls. So in Australia, the direction that gravity pulls is different than in Los Alamitos. Uh, this number is uh, so important that uh, it gets its own letter. A lowercase g is often used in place of the lowercase a when you're representing the acceleration due to gravity. So this 9.8 meters per second squared is 1g. Um, you can use, it is approximately 10 meters per second squared. So if you're just doing quick calculations and you only need one sig fig, you can use 10 meters per second. But if you need two or more sig figs, 9.8 is what you should use. Um, some people, when they talk about Gs, they talk about G forces, and that would be an equivalent force, a force that causes an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. So when you're pulling Gs, it means you're experiencing acceleration. Okay, so now that that's been said, I want to warn you about one more thing having to do with this. Sometimes this information about gravity doing the accelerating is hidden in a problem under the word drop or dropped or fall. Dropped or falls means that you get the acceleration due to gravity. Also, it means that your starting velocity will be zero meters per second. So these two numbers, 9.8 meters per second squared of acceleration and a starting velocity of zero meters per second are hidden underneath these two words if you see them in a problem. All right, um, that's the preliminary information. It's time to start uh, a really important lesson here today. And that is the four equations of motion and my patented five-step problem-solving method. So let's get cracking on that. Let's start with where we ended last time. Last time we ended by talking about the variables, the things you needed to pay attention to and keep track of if you were going to do one-dimensional motion. And these are the variables that you would need to keep track of if you're going to do one-dimensional motion. Apologize for this T turning out a little funny, but that's a T. The initial position, the final position, the initial velocity, the final velocity, the acceleration, and the time. So that's six things. There's only six things you need to pay attention to, and you can understand one-dimensional motion completely. Uh, what if I was to tell you that uh, we could narrow this list down to five and only pay attention to five of the six things? Would you be interested in that? Uh, good to hear. Good to hear. Uh, we can do that if you always choose to put the origin of your coordinate system where the object is at the beginning of the problem. If you always choose to put the origin where the object starts, then your initial position will be zero meters. That's the origin. And so we can just write, instead of final position, we can just write an X. And X just means final position, initial position being zero. If you agree to do this, and I kind of see that you do, um, then we can make this list a little shorter. And the new list of things you have to keep track of is this, 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 and this. Final position, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, which doesn't change during the problem, and time, which is a single number for the problem. So this is the cast of characters that you need to pay attention to in order to solve one-dimensional motion problems. And now, in this area down here, we're going to talk about how you relate those 
five things to each other. And those five things are related to each other using four equations of motion. Um, I could spend time deriving these equations of motion and showing you where they come from, but I find that students don't necessarily care as much where they come from. They just want to know what they are and how to use them. So let's focus on that. Let's start with the first one. By the way, before I start writing these down, you're going to wind up memorizing these, okay? You're going to need to memorize them. I'll give them to you on the top of quizzes for the first week or two, but then I'm going to have to have a test or quiz question where I ask you for these things. So I don't know if you want to make flashcards or just learn them by using them. The first equation says that your final position is equal to your initial position times time plus one half of your acceleration times time squared. And this equation, I like to call it the Swiss Army equation. I've given these equations names so we can talk about them. Not everybody gives them names. I don't think the book gives them names. And certainly nobody has called this one the Swiss Army equation except for me and my students. Um, but I call it the Swiss Army equation because it has the most places where you need to put a number in place of a letter. And that means the most attachments. And it's also very useful the way that the Swiss Army knife is very useful. The second equation of motion is that your final velocity is equal to your initial velocity plus acceleration times time. And I call this equation the definition of acceleration because that's where I got it from. I stole it from the definition of acceleration in yesterday's lecture. Uh, A equals delta V over T in yesterday's lecture. So if you do a little algebra, you get this version of it. You know, these things read pretty well if you want to read them using the mathematical relationships. It says that your final velocity is equal to your starting velocity plus the effect of any acceleration. This one says that your final position is equal to the effect of your velocity plus the effect of your acceleration. All right, two more equations. One over here, x equals one-half vi plus vf times t. And I call this one the no a equation. Sometimes I refer to it as the Canadian equation, no a or if your name is Noah, this is your equation, Noah. This one says that your final position is equal to somehow your average velocity times time. This kind of comes from the definition of velocity, but the fact that velocity is changing means we have to use the average. This average uh, being the arithmetic average of the two velocities added together and then divided by two, that only works if the velocity is changing uniformly. But the velocity is changing uniformly or linearly if we have constant acceleration. And finally, you can construct another formula, which is Vf squared, Vi squared, plus 2 times A. That's a really weird looking A. Oh, Armin, this is supposed to be an X. Okay, we got we to gotta go again. And I'm too lazy to actually start the video again just because I made a mistake. 2 a x i was so worried about how crappy that a looked that i stressed out and almost put a t in there this equation is called the no t equation because it's missing t or you could call it not <laughs> these are the four equations of motion you'll need to use these and so the last part of this before we do some examples is to give you the five-step problem solving method and the reason i came up with this five-step problem solving method is that when I was learning physics, they gave me the four equations of motion and then they said, hey, try these guys out when you're solving problems and see which one works. And you were supposed to learn by repetition which one kind of worked in given situations. And that, that didn't appeal to me because that would mean that there would be times that I would try this equation and it wouldn't work, this equation and it doesn't work, this equation doesn't work, then this one does. And I've wasted all the effort trying these equations that didn't work. So I started to notice that there was a way to predict which equation was going to work. And that way of predicting which equation was going to work um, is based on uh, principles of algebra. You cannot solve for a thing unless that thing is in your equation. And if you want to solve an equation, a single equation, you need to have only one unknown, not two. So focusing on eliminating unknowns that you don't have um, is really important. Now I'm going to I'm going to transcribe these equations right here 
uh, really quickly so that we can use them later. around these guys now we're gonna go for the five step problem-solving method don't skip these steps very important I'm gonna program you like a little robot here let's change colors for fun okay step number one you will draw a picture of the situation you do not need to be a good artist but your picture needs to indicate your coordinate system must put your coordinate system show me where the origin is show yourself where the origin is show yourself which direction is positive that's going to prevent you from making a mistake where you put something into your uh, into your equation that is a negative and you put it in as a positive instead okay number two make a list of the knowns and the unknowns. Now, I, I know you, uh, I can list things I know, but how can I list things I don't know? Well, it's because it's always the same list. It's always these five things. So you either know them and you put a number from the problem in place of them, or you don't know them and you put down a question mark for them. And trust me, it's the unknowns that really help you in this business. Third, pick an equation. Pick the correct equation that will get you to your answer in one try, okay? And the picking that equation is based on my triple negative system. The triple negative, if you don't know it, and you don't want it, then you must avoid it. Yeah, let's add it to the end of these things. If you don't know it and you don't want it, then you should avoid it. I'll show you how that works. It's really not that difficult once we get going. Number four, plug and chug. Plugging refers to substitution. Put numbers in place of letters. Chugging refers to algebra. Manipulate things. Do math. Move things around so that you solve for the unknown. Now, at this point, after step four, you've plugged, you've chugged, you have an unknown equals a number. You have an answer. And it's not a five-step method. It's a four-step method, except we want to do step five. Step five, make sure you have the correct units on your answer. And that you do a sanity check. When we solve our first problem, we're going to uh, solve a problem where uh, somebody drops an object from shoulder level and it falls to the ground. And these equations describe the real world. And if you have real world measurements going into it, your answer should make sense in the real world. So if we get an answer of 600 seconds for how long it takes something to fall from shoulder level to the ground, that cannot be right. 600 seconds is 10 minutes. It does not take 10 minutes for uh, something to fall to the ground. So we must have made a mistake. So sanity check, make sure the answer makes sense. Okay, time to go ahead and use this to solve a real problem. Now, let's see. I don't know that I've left enough space unless, unless we can get it going right underneath here. I think we can. Let's draw a picture. So I'm going to drop a, uh, let's, what's something I can draw easily? Okay, how about a baseball? Here's a baseball. I'm going to drop it from 1.5 meters above the ground. Harmon drops a baseball. 1.5 meters to the ground. How long does it 
fall. So here's the baseball held at 1.5 meters above the ground. Here's the baseball just hitting the ground. I'll put some lines next to the baseball because it's moving now. And I'm going to indicate my coordinate system. I'm going to have the origin be up here at the top. And I'm going to have the positive direction being downwards. I could even label down here 1.5 meters because that's 1.5 meters below the origin. I know it's a little weird to have zero up here at the top, but we made an agreement that we would have the origin start wherever the object started. So we're stuck with that. And there's my drawing. That made the problem from a word problem into a picture problem. Let my brain wrap itself around there and figure out what's going on. Now let's make the list of knowns and unknowns. Here it is, x equals vi equals vf equals a equals t equals. Do we know x, the final position of the ball? Why, yes, it will be 1.5 meters towards the ground there, 0, 1.5. Do we know the starting velocity of the ball? Yes, it's dropped. It's a dropped ball, so it starts at 0 meters per second. Do we know the final velocity of the ball? Well, in physics class, we stop the problem just as the ball is hitting the ground, not after. So this is a number, but we don't know what that number is. See the speed lines, it's moving, but it's not, not something we know. Do we know the acceleration? Yes, it has been dropped. The acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. And it's a positive 9.8 because positive is the downward direction. The acceleration of gravity is downwards. And we also don't know the time. Now, <clears throat> to do step three and to pick the correct equation, we just have to look at this list and apply the triple negative. Here are the two things that we do not know. Now, of those two things, we're looking for T, so it better be in our equation. We're not looking for VF. So VF here is the thing that we don't know. We don't want it, and so we need to avoid it. Which of these equations up here does not have a VF? The bottom one does. The second one up does. The third one up does, but the top one, the Swiss Army equation, does not have a VF. So let's write down the Swiss Army equation. Now I'm writing down the Swiss Army equation without doing anything to it. That way I get the point for having chosen the correct equation. And that's step three. I've gotten three points out of five already on this problem because you get a point for each step in my class. Here we go. Let's put the numbers in. Let's plug and chug. X. Looks like it gets replaced with 1.5. VI gets replaced with 0. T we don't know, so we're going to leave it as T. I'll put it in parentheses here. Then we have 1 half of A, which is 9.8. And T squared, we don't know T, so we leave it as T squared. Don't forget the square. Rookie mistake if you forget, forget the square. Now, looking at this, 0 times t, well, it doesn't even matter what t is. When you multiply something by 0, it goes away. So this simplifies a bit. And we can simplify 1 half of 9.8. That's 4.9. And now the equation is looking pretty good. I, my first step of chugging, my first step of algebra, I, I made this into a 0, and I combined these two. Now the next step would probably be divide. 1.5 divided by 4.9 is going to equal t squared. And finally, if we go over here, t is going to wind up being the square root of 1.5 divided by 4.9. So it's time to get the calculator out. Okay, it's not turning on. There we go. 1.5 divided by 4.9 equals... And then we're going to take a square root of that answer, and that equals 0.55. Step five, put the units on. That's seconds. And I'm going to circle the answer so that the grader can find it and give me the maximum points possible. But before we move along, let's make sure that we do a sanity check. Does that make sense for someone to drop a ball from about shoulder or face level 1.5 meters and have it fall in 0.55 seconds yeah that's a little more than half a second i kind of thought it would have taken more like a second but i think when we drop things you know that we get that elastic time time slows down because you're thinking no my cell phone ah. and um it just seems like it takes a lot longer uh, we can do the experiment but that's a totally reasonable answer 
Okay, uh, this has gone to 19 minutes and 54 seconds, so um, there you go, the five-step problem-solving method, and we will practice with this ad nauseum.